Hey, what's good? It's your boy, Matthew Michael. And in today's video, we're going to be going over how to trade options for beginners on a Weeble. Be sure to stick around to the end of this video because I'll actually be going over how you can make over $100 a day trading options. And I personally believe mindset is everything for options. It's kind of going over a great mindset to have when you're trading options. And I know this video is geared towards beginners, but I understand you may also know some of it. So I have gone through the liberty of going through and putting chapters in the video. So if you need to skip ahead, don't hesitate to skip ahead. Kind of the way this video is gonna go, we're gonna talk about options as a whole in general. We're gonna talk about contracts. I'm gonna list off some vocabulary words for those of you who like to take notes and we'll go over those vocabulary words later on in the video. I actually find it a bit easier to explain some of these uh, vocabulary words and some of these terms as we're actually in the platform because I often get questions about these. So yeah, really wanna address those where you can visibly see it. And then after and kind of during uh, us actually going through the terminology, we'll make a trade and we'll also sell out of it too. Uh, I'll try to do this all in the same video. So uh, just because of the fact that I'm doing it in the same video may not be profitable on the trade, may get lucky and take profits, but even if we don't take profit in this video, stick around to the end of the video and I'll be going over how you can make over $100 a day trading options. But first, before we get into the video, if you're new here and haven't already, please be sure to subscribe. Uh, I have a goal of hitting over 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year, and you are a very important part of that. I would love nothing other than to have you as part of the family. Also, while you're down there, be sure to smash the like button. It really helps to support the channel and get this video out to those who really need it. And also, no need to just rely on the like button. Uh, be sure to share this video with your friends, your family, anybody who you think will benefit from this or really enjoy this video. And then just a couple more announcements before we get into the video. If you're interested in signing up for my Discord community, be sure to check out the referral link down below in the description. Uh, when you sign up for my Discord, not only do you get access to some of my trades and the ability to talk to me and my community in the chat, but you also get access to the Tiblio Active Trader Chat. The Tiblio Active Trader Chat is a community of thousands of traders and let me just tell you how invaluable that is i definitely recommend checking that out down below in the description that's going to be the first link down there and then also if you are interested in a uh, stock market screeners a uh, trade journal things to track your plays or just give you ideas on what kind of trades to make be sure to check out the link in the description for tiblio pro when you sign up for tiblio pro uh, using the link down below in the description, you actually get 50% off your first month. And when you sign up for Tiblio Pro, it also includes access to my Discord community. So that's definitely going to be the best value overall. But yeah, if you're interested in any of that, be sure to check that out down below in the description. A couple more things. If you haven't already signed up for Weeble or, or interested in getting any kinds of free stocks, hey, be sure to check out the stock market links down below in the description. Uh, we got free stocks for Moomoo. Moo, free stocks for Weeble. And when you sign up using those referral links, you're also helping out the channel. And I know I just said a lot, but one last thing before we get into the video, I'm just going to take my Instagram and leave it right here. Do with it as you will. And without further ado, let's get into the video. All right. So the majority of this video, we're going to be on my phone, actually looking through the Weeble app together. But to start off this video, I want to quickly start off by talking about what an option is. Now I'm hoping that You've at least taken the time to look at stocks yourself, um, at least taken the time to realize, uh, you know, maybe a share of Apple cost around $200, uh, a share of Facebook around $300. And there are going to be some stocks that cost a lot of money, a lot more than you probably want to spend. And then there'll be penny stocks. It's really not that troublesome to buy well over 100 shares up. Well, when it comes to looking at more expensive stocks like Facebook, Apple, Amazon, if you've seen Amazon or Google, those stocks are well over $3,000. Options are a really good way to profit off them. Put simply, options are a contract that represents 100 shares of an underlying stock. Uh, when I say underlying stock, again, that could be your Apple, Facebook, Tesla. Again, it can also be those cheaper stocks, but um, when it comes to those other more expensive stocks, it's kind of a nice way to profit off the movement. And while I say it's a nice way to profit off the movement, don't get me wrong, options can be very risky. And by the way, this is not financial advice. I make these videos for entertainment purposes. Should you learn something from them, that is on you. Back to what I was saying, options, they represent 100 shares of a stock. So for instance, if you have an options contract on Facebook and it moves by a dollar, 
the contract, the options contract moves by a hundred dollars because one dollar on Facebook times 100, the contract has moved a hundred dollars. Now I say it moves a hundred dollars, but there are going to be some varying factors that we will get into later into the video. So that's kind of what a option represents on a basic level. Moving on a little bit, there are going to be two sides to an option. There is going to be buying to open and there's going to be what's called selling to open. So an option is a contract, a contract between the buyer and the seller. The seller is also known as the option writer. The person who buys the contract is paying the seller for the right to exercise the option. We'll get into it, but the, basically the person who buys the contract is paying the person who sells the contract for the right to do whatever with the contract. So as a buyer of the contract, you are paying money to get that contract. As a seller of the contract, you are making money no matter what, you are getting paid to sell that contract. I just wanna kinda of get that out of the way. There are two sides to an option. Um, both of them can be profitable. The seller side is typically more consistently profitable and the buyer side is, it can be consistently profitable, but you don't wanna spend as much time in the contract. But that being said, it's a much bigger barrier of entry to be a seller than it is to be a buyer. So typically a lot more people start out being buyers rather than being a seller. And that's actually what we're gonna focus on in this video. So now that I've kind of gone over a little bit, the two sides to options trading, I'm gonna list off some vocabulary words for those of you who like to take notes. And we will address these vocabulary words later on in the video. All right, so to start off, I'm actually reading for some notes myself. Um, the first one is going to be break even, expiration. We're gonna talk about what a day trade is. We're gonna talk about P&L, which stands for profit and loss. Uh, we're gonna talk about in the money, out of the money. We're gonna talk about what a bid is. We're gonna talk about the ask. We're gonna talk about last change. We're gonna talk about a limit order. We're gonna talk about a market order. We're gonna talk about the RSI, the MACD, as well as the moving average. And I don't have it on here, but we're also gonna be talking about the expiration date. And now that you've been introduced to your vocabulary, uh, let's hop in the good old Weeble and take a look at how to trade options. All right, so here we are in one of my Weeble accounts. Um, this account has $54.58 in it. So that's gonna be the budget for the trade we make today. But before we get into making a trade and everything, I wanna quickly like go over this platform with you so you know how to navigate it a little bit. Cause I remember when I first got on Weeble, um, honestly, I, I didn't like it much just because of the fact that I didn't know where everything was. Um, I actually came from Robinhood. Uh, Robinhood, it's, it's almost like playing a game on Robinhood. So Robinhood, it's every, everything is just so simple, but as you kind of grow up, uh, make other portfolios and whatnot, they'll be a lot more similar to Weeble than they are Robinhood. So Robinhood, like if you know how to trade on Robinhood, that's kind of cool because it's kind of a step but the problem with Robinhood is typically when you're on Robinhood, you don't want to leave. Upgrading to something like Weeble can actually be very beneficial when it comes to, uh, you know, maybe wanting to look at other uh, platforms as well, like your Thinkorswim, TD Ameritrade, Charles Schwab, stuff like that. All right, so uh, first off, um, I am on the very middle tab at the bottom. If we look, the one that looks like the little horn or the little bull horns or whatever, uh, you'll notice like, when you click on that, it takes you to your assets. Your assets, this is typically where your stocks are going to be displayed and whatnot. And just kind of going over this stuff on the screen, the cash balance is the money you have in your account. Settled cash is typically if you want to make a withdrawal or anything to your bank account. What's settled is going to be what's available to be withdrawn. Um, buying power, that is the money that you have available to buy uh, different contracts or buy different stocks and stuff. And then options buying power, this could sometimes be a little different from your buying power. This is how much buying power you have to uh, buy options, like what we're going to do in this video. The day's P&L, that's gonna be how much up or down you are on the day. We'll take another look at that later on. You'll notice at the top there are these little tabs. So right here, P&L, this is like your profit and loss over different time spans. So you see there's the three month, we can go down to one month, uh, we can go down to five days. I'm down on the past week. But uh, 
yeah, that's your profit and loss. You'll see that um, the profit I realized is $776 over the past three months. Um, that's just from trading. Um, I haven't made any money from dividends, haven't used any margin, and margin typically isn't anything I really recommend. And actually, I don't recommend anything. This is not financial advice. This is you. As you scroll down, you'll see your gainers and your losers. So um, these are the profits I made on these stocks. Um, as you look at the gainers, uh, these are over the past three months. So on Met, I made almost $900. DocuSign almost a hundred, Sonos almost fifty-five dollars, Facebook twenty-four dollars, and so on. And then when it comes to my losing plays, lost two hundred six dollars overall on Neo, PayPal, Riot, all that stuff. And then right here, if we look at the PL calendar, it'll show you how I did over a certain time frame. Alright, so yeah, that's the PL. The PL is gonna be where you go whenever you want to see how you're doing and how you've been doing. And then orders this is where you will find the orders that you have in play if there's nothing in orders you haven't put any orders in or maybe your order got filled so that's that's cool transfers this is where you want to go whenever you want to either put money in your account or withdraw money from your account so you'll see like i'm i'm not going to go fully down i'm not going to scroll down anymore but you can see i have a bank account connected and then under there you see recent deposits slash withdrawals uh, those are both withdrawals and that's how it looks when you withdraw. Then if you go over to history tab, uh, you can look at the history of the trades that you made. This, these are stocks. Uh, you see I've sold these stocks, uh, bought this option right there, the Facebook, and then documents. These are going to be your trading documents. I pretty much never do anything with that. I think this may be helpful when it comes times for taxes, but for the most part, I like literally never do anything with that. So uh, that being said, that is everything on the main middle tab. Typically you're gonna be on the assets or maybe looking at your history if you wanna look back at your history or your P&L. All right, so the next tab we're gonna look at is gonna be the far left. It's gonna be watch list. So it naturally tries to throw you in the my positions. But if you actually swipe over, it'll throw you to your other playlist. This is my watch list. Whereas um, you'll see there are a few different ones. So right there, there's my positions. Right now I don't have any positions. So my watch list, these are the stocks I typically like to watch. So yeah, this is my watch list. Uh, you'll see the ticker symbol on the left, which is just the symbol that the company is going under. And then, yeah, you can click on them and get more, but we'll come back to that in a little bit. So I'm gonna click on the top left and go back. That's scratching the surface of the watch list and everything but I wanna quickly go over markets with you. You can get a lot of information from this markets tab. Um, right now, this is the US market. Uh, you have the advancers and decliners. You have a lot of uh, good information right here in the app. The advances and decliners, the advancers are the ones that are green on the day. The decliners are the stocks that are down. It kind of gives you a good gauge on the market. Uh, a lot more in the market today is down than up because there are almost 4,000 decliners, whereas 3,600 advancers this is uh the nasdaq uh so yeah here you just have a good amount of market tools uh top losers so yeah if you're looking for some puts or just trying to see what's going down the most where you want to look you can look on the day five minutes five days on the month all that good stuff um then most popular etfs and all that stuff so this is going to be great for market research and whatnot um, you can also explore, uh, I don't use this too often, but you have earnings calendars. That's pretty valuable companies that have their 52 week highs. Uh, you also have research on cryptos as well as uh, global research. I don't really do too much with that, but yeah, I typically like to stay on the United States tab when I like to do research on here. All right, going on, you have your community tab. I personally don't use the community through this, but one thing I absolutely love about Webull is the community. One cool thing, if you wanna do some more learning, you can click on the learning tab and they have a lot of tutorials. Like if you wanna see more options basics, uh, you, you won't need that because you're watching this video, but uh, you can click on it, it's gonna load and you can read up on the options trading and stuff on Weeble. Uh, then you have your messages. This is where you're gonna get all your notifications. It looks like uh, 
my latest notification is I got a free stock from someone using my referral link. So for those of you who use my referral link to sign up for Webull, thank you. I appreciate you. I love to see that notification. Other than like free stocks and stuff like that, mostly like stock alerts if you set any alerts on any stocks or anything. And let me quickly show you where you would find your free stocks if you're new to Webull and don't know where to find them. Because I remember when I did, uh, I had no idea where to go. So if you actually click on your little icon, your your little avatar in the top right, this will take you to this page right here. And if you click on my rewards, this is typically where you will have your free stocks. So these are the free stocks I've gotten. So I'm gonna go back and yeah, that's pretty much what you're gonna wanna do right there. And then also you have paper trading. The thing about paper trading is I think on Webull, it only lets you paper trade stocks. So I don't see too much value in the paper trading on Webull. All right, that being said, let's go back over to the watch list tab and let's get into all those vocabulary words we started talking over. In this video, we'll be taking a look at Facebook. I don't know why I really like to do examples on like Apple and Facebook, but yeah, in this video, we'll be talking about Facebook. Uh, Facebook actually is their ticker symbol is FB, but their company is now changed to Meta. So if you're like, why does it say FB, but it's Meta platforms. Uh, this is the old Facebook. They just haven't changed their ticker symbol yet. Now I know this can look very confusing. So we're going to take our time on this page and I'm going to break it down to you. So right here, you have this chart right here. This is like the one on Robinhood that's usually just a line. This one's actually a lot more helpful because it has uh, wicks. So these wicks, um, like if we look at this one in the middle that says 315.46 down at the bottom, uh, the wicks, these are usually representative of a certain time frame. If we look at the bottom of left of the screen where it says four hours right here, you can actually change it. Typically, if you're trying to get in and out real fast in the same day, you'll look anywhere from like one minute to five. And I personally prefer to look at the five whenever I'm looking on that time frame. But uh, me personally, I like to make longer term like options trades. So I usually have mine on the four hour. So uh, for those of you who don't know what these wicks mean, um, typically the bottom is the lowest point it hits in that time frame. The top is the highest point it hits in that time frame. If it's green, wherever the top of the bold part of the line is, that is going to be where it ended or where it's at right now if it's live, as you can see with this green one right here. And then if it's red, wherever the bottom of the bold part is, that's either where it's going to be where it's at or where it ended in that time frame. I know one of our vocabulary words was moving average. Uh, so yeah, let's talk about that. So you'll see um, like right under where it says chart, there's gonna be MA in white, there's MA5 in blue, there's MA in orange and MA and MA20. So these are all moving averages and moving averages are just based on different time frames and whatnot. The moving average is gonna be the average trading price of a stock in a certain time frame. So yeah, that's something to know. Uh, the next vocabulary word that we had on here that was an indicator was gonna actually be the RSI. So the RSI, um, if you look under the KDJ thing, being honest, I don't even know what the KDJ is, but if you look under KDJ, you'll see RSI. And the RSI stands for Relative Strength Index. The RSI tells you if the stock is overbought or oversold. So if we zoom out, you can see that as we zoom out, there are dotted lines for the RSI and the dotted line on the bottom end is 30 and the dotted line on the top end is 70. So typically with the RSI, anything below 30 is considered oversold and then anything above 70 is considered overbought. If it's oversold, it's typically a good time to like buy a call or buy the stock. And then when it's overbought, typically a good time to either buy a put or sell a stock. Now stocks don't always rely on those rules just, just because of things like the pandemic or good earnings or positive catalyst happen. So don't just go off the RSI. If you're going off the RSI, be sure to check news as well. Uh, another amazing thing about Webull is just gonna be that you have your news right here in the app. Um, you can click on and get your news and see what's really going on with it right here in the app. You have the comment section, which is Again, this is what I meant when I said I love the Webull community. Tommy D says puts for the rest of the week on Webull. So it kind of gives you an idea of what people are saying about the stock or what people are thinking. And because of Tommy D, that may be what we do. Another cool thing is you have your analysis right here in the app. You can see the average analyst price target 
The high end is 466. The average price is about $401. And the low end is $250 for Facebook. And you just have all this market data in here. And I feel like I've made this more of like a complete Weeble tutorial. At least you'll know how to navigate. That being said, um, going back to the chart, I think there was one other thing on the chart that we didn't talk about. So if you want to set up the chart your own way, click on this little box next to the three dots at the bottom right. Click on settings. And then right here you have access to the indicators that we just looked at. So if you wanted to change your in indicators, um, you have your moving averages, your EMA, all that stuff. You may want to look that up. But actually, while we're right here, I, I want to take a second to talk about the MACD. The MACD is the moving average convergence divergence. And the MACD is basically just two lines that either move closer or move further apart. And uh, whenever they move closer or they cross, that's typically when the market is either going from bearish to bullish or bullish to bearish. I know it wasn't a vocabulary word, but if you're not aware of what those words mean, uh, bearish is typically uh, people who believe the stock market is going to go down or the stock's going to go down. And bullish is uh, people who want the stock market to go up. Now that we've looked at all the indicators and everything, let's actually get into this final tab at the top and that is going to be the options tab. Here on this options tab, you see there are a lot of options that we have here. There are a lot of vocabulary words that we had that I gave you earlier. So yeah, we can actually start talking about those. So um, just under where it says chart, options, news, comments, uh, you'll see strike, bid, ask, last, change, and mid. So we'll start off by talking about all those. One vocabulary word I actually forgot to mention is strike. That is the strike price. The strike price is going to be the price that the options contract would be executed at. This has a strike price of $200 and this contract is actually a call. And where I saw it was a call, if you go um, further over to where it says two days or two, 2D, uh, it says call. So basically what this contract would mean anytime from now to two days when this expires, if I bought it at the $200 strike, I have the right to buy 100 shares of Facebook at $200 each, even though Facebook is trading at $333. So that can be very beneficial if you buy it ahead of time and Facebook moves up a lot in value. But um, honestly, right now, if you were to buy something like that, it wouldn't be the best deal because the price that it's going for is $133.57 per share. So if you multiply that by 100, that is how much the contract is. That being said, let's go over all these other terms. All these other bid, ask, last, and mid, all those are gonna be referring to the price of the contract. The bid is basically the highest price anybody is willing to pay to purchase the contract at the moment. The ask is the lowest price anyone is willing to sell the contract for at the moment. Last is gonna be the last price that the contract was sold at. And then percent change is gonna be the percentage amount that the value of the contract has changed throughout the day. So, that $200 strike one that I was talking about actually went up by 4% today from where it closed yesterday. And then the last column where it says mid, that is actually gonna be the mid price, which is right in between the ask and the bid. And that's typically a good point to start whenever you're trying to actually buy a contract. So we've taken a look at most of the numbers. Now let's take a look at the expiration date. So you see right under strike, it says 2D um, and that stands for uh, two days. That is the day that the contract expires. So after the expiration date, these contracts have no value. When they expire, they can either be exercised like right on expiration or their value is gone forever. When it comes to expiration, there are many different days you can go. Typically, you can go out uh, either to the end of the week or as far out as two years typically. If I actually click on this 2D, you'll see that it kind of collapses down and you'll have all these other days. So we can go all the way out to January 19th, 2024, if we wanted to. Now you'll notice that these contracts are more expensive. The more time you get on these contracts, the more expensive it'll be. So just know that time plays into the factor of how expensive contracts are. Uh, another crucial factor when it comes to how expensive the contracts are is gonna be whether it's in the money or out of the money, or if it's out of the money, how close to the money it is. We'll go back to the two day expiration for an example, and we'll talk about what in and out of the money is. You'll notice right here, we're looking at Facebook. Facebook is trading at 333 right now. It's kind of weird. It's above the strike price on this little chart, 
but price wise it's below the strike price everything right there is going to be considered in the money as you can see there is a little arrow pointing up and it says itm which means in the money so these contracts will have more value and the more in the money these contracts are the closer when it comes to expiration the more value these will have so you'll notice right here if we look at this 350 strike it's 10 cents for the contract or if you multiply 10 cents by 100 it's going to be ten dollars for this contract overall i want you to see right here this is the two day strike now if we take that same call and go to what was it 350 we go out two years you'll notice it's 59.55 that right there just kind of demonstrates the value of time in an options contract and the more time you get on the contract the more money it's going to cost and the reason that it costs more money is because of the fact that that option is going to have more time to actually move and get to that price we've already gone over everything that is above this line right here this kind of reddish line is considered in the money everything below it is going to be considered out of the money and you'll notice it just has less value everything out of the money whenever it comes time for expiration these will expire completely worthless and when i say completely worthless i mean nobody will want to buy these contracts these contracts have no value just because they're out of the money and you want to exercise the contract you'll be paying more money exercising buying 100 shares with the contract than you would buying the shares on the market so um, you're better off buying the shares on the market than exercising the contract. Whereas everything in the money, you'll be better exercising the contract than buying 100 shares on the market. Yeah, right here, we're looking at calls and a call is what you want to buy if you think the stock price is going to go up because as the stock price goes up, the value of the contract goes up as well. So yeah, those are calls. And if we look down here at the bottom right uh, where it says calls, I can actually click on puts. Puts are the exact same thing as calls except for uh, you profit on the stock price going down. So for instance, you'll notice that same $350 strike for a put is $16.60 instead of $0.10. Cents. And the reason that it's that much money is because on expiration, if let's say Facebook expires at $3.30, this contract will be worth $1,500 because opposite to a call where a call gives you the right to buy 100 shares, at the strike price, a put gives you the right to sell 100 shares at the strike price. So if you sell 100 shares at $350 when the stock is trading at $330, right there, that is actually $2,000 profit instantly right there. And I, I think I said $1,500 a moment ago, it's actually $2,000 that you'd be profiting right there. I personally like to look at the option side one at a time. You see there are puts right here and we had the calls right here. But you can also look and you can do both and see them both at the same time. So again, going to that 350 strike, 350 strike is going for 10 cents, whereas the 350 put is going for $17. So yeah, depending on whether they're in the money or out of the money is gonna make a big difference. So when it comes to calls, in the money is gonna be above on Weeble and out of the money is gonna be below. And when it comes to puts, in the money is gonna be below on Weeble and out of the money is going to be above. So yeah, in the money contracts are always going to be a lot more valuable than out of the money contracts. And now that we've gone over that, let's we're going to buy a put on Facebook. I'm actually going to go out nine days instead of two days, just so I have a little bit more time on the contract. I actually want to walk through and show you how to do this so you know how to do this. I don't intend on profiting because it doesn't look like the stocks are moving that much right now, but I just want to show you how to do this so you know how to do this. So um, I'm just going to look at the put side and with the money I have, I don't have the money to buy anything in the money. Typically, I would like in the money. Looks like the best thing I can do right now is grab this out of the money 305 put for next week. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the contract and then it brings me to this screen. So just to go over what's going on on this screen, kind of towards the middle, you'll see there's a 45.47. These are the prices the stock is going for. So the 45 is the bid price and the 47 is actually the ask price. Now, um, if I click right here, you'll notice, you'll see the bid is 44 now and the ask is 46. And if I click mid, that is gonna change the price. That is gonna be the price that I am putting in for it to, for me to pay. Now, again, I said there were two sides to the contract. Um, in this video, we're focusing on buying. There's also selling. You could sell the contract if you already own the contract and that's actually how you take profits. You'll see that a little bit later. 
but you could also sell the contract if you owned 100 shares of Facebook, which I do not, so I'm not gonna do. And that's what I was saying earlier, it's a much higher barrier to entry, so I'm gonna buy. And then there are two types of orders we'll focus on this in this video. So there's limit order, which is the contract's only gonna get filled either at a better price than what you put in or up to what the price you put in. So right now, my limit price is $46. I will not pay more than $46 for this contract. And I know I say $46 and it shows 46 cents, but I'm saying $46 because you multiply that number by 100 and that's how much real money you're gonna have to pay because I'm not paying 46 cents for this contract. And actually, if you really don't know, if you look down towards the bottom, you'll see um, it says estimated premium. You'll see estimated premium and then it says debit in red and it's $46 there that is going to be the price that i pay for the contract so that's a limit order the next thing type of order is going to be a market order and this is just going to be if you're trying to get the order filled as fast as possible but i would urge against this just because you can kind of still get your order filled fast with the limit order and not be at the mercy of the market if the stock price goes up really high really fast this price could jump up really fast and then come back down and you could get filled at a price that you do not like. So um, I typically advise against market orders, but so I'm gonna do a limit order and we're gonna do it, I'm gonna try 44 cause it's right in between the bid and the ask and I am going to hit buy. And it's gonna ask me if I wanna do that. I'm gonna hit confirm. And then right here it says I was filled at 44 cents. So now that I bought the contract, let's actually run over to the home screen uh, assets. So now you see on assets that I am holding a contract on Facebook. Going over what's, what you see here, um, now you see open PL that's showing I'm down 1% uh, on the positions that, I'm op that I have open. Um, the day's PL is gonna, right now it's the same as the open PL just because that, that's, it's only one contract and I bought it today. And then if we go down to my positions, you'll see the open PL again. That is how much I am up or down since I bought the contract. Right now I am down. Some other things I want to show you to look at is if we click on the contract, you can see the break even. Uh, so where the break in even is going to be under, like if you look on the middle of your screen under the 4344 right now, uh, the next words you'll see are break even and then to the right of that you see 304.56. Break even is going to be the price you need the stock to be at at expiration to break even to not have made money or lost money on this contract. In order for me to do that, I need Facebook to go all the way down to $304.56 to not have lost money or made money. If it's below that when this expires, I will have made a little bit of money. Every single penny past that on expiration is an additional dollar of profit that I've made on the position. But one thing to realize is you don't need it to go past break even or even for it to go to break even to make profit on the position. So yeah, now that I've showed you all that, I wanna show you how to close out the position. So you can always click on the position and hit sell to close. And that'll uh, take you over here where you, like now instead of buy, you see sell. And that's typically gonna be the easiest way to do it. And that's the way I like to do it. You can also look it up in the option change and sell it like that as well. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click on the option. I'm gonna hit sell to close. And again, right here, you see the order type's gonna be limit. Uh, I'm not gonna do a market order because it usually does what's best for the market and not what's best for you. And right now you see the limit price is zero but I'm going to change that to the mid price of 43. That way I at least get $43 back and I'll have only lost $3 on this trade. Uh, so I'm going to hit mid price, hit next. And I only have one contract, so that's what I'm going to sell. Hey, and I'm losing $3 right now for you. Be sure to smash the like button. Help me recover my gains. Be sure to share this with your friends and family. Try to help me recover this $3 because yo, I'm about to take a hurting. But yeah, I want to sell this. And uh, there's one other thing I wanna show you. Down here where it says time and force, there's day. If this doesn't get filled, it'll be here till the end of the day. If I hit good till canceled, this will be good till canceled. But yeah, I hit good till canceled and I will hit sell and we'll see if we get filled. So I hit confirm 
and I didn't quite get filled quite as fast this time. Okay, and right there, now you see the order was filled. So that is gonna be how you buy and sell a contract on Webull and how you trade options. Now that we've gone over pretty much the whole Webull platform and all that options terminology, you know how to buy and sell out of a trade. You know how to pick your strike and everything. Now it's time for me to tell you how you can make $100 a day trading options on Webull. So this is gonna be based off an account size of $1,000. Uh, I don't have a thousand dollars in my account right now to show you if that is something that you would like to personally see me do uh, put a thousand dollars in an account and trade for a week with it and make a hundred dollars a day and let me know down below in the comments if you would be interested in seeing that but basically the most important part of trading options is going to be your setup and your strategy when it comes to trading options you always want to go in with the plan and if you make it a goal to make 10% on every trade you make. If you use that full thousand dollars and you make 10% with it, that is essentially a hundred dollars in a day. You use that thousand dollars to make a hundred dollars. And at the end of the day, once you made your $100, you withdraw the money and that is your hundred dollars for the day. Now I'm going to be real with you. It's a lot easier said than done. If your account size is a thousand dollars, I definitely would not recommend using all that thousand dollars to make a hundred dollars because you can lose a lot of that really fast. In reality, if I were trying to make $100 on a position, I'd probably go in with about $300 and that's about a 30 to 40% gain on the position. So if you look at it like that and you break down the numbers, you'll find that it's a lot more attainable than you realize. But I wanna say that if I don't end up making a tutorial on me trading with $1,000 on Webull making $100 a day, first off, the only reason that I wouldn't make that video is because y'all didn't comment that y'all wanted down below in the comments. Second off, can we get this video to 2,000 likes? I remember that used to be something we used to do here on YouTube, try to get a certain like. Can we get this video to 2,000? I know it's a lot more than my normal videos, but uh, I really think this video can get to 2,000. Even if y'all end up not saying anything in the comments and this video is at 2,000 likes, I'll, I'll make the video anyway. But going back to what I was saying, while it can be pretty easy to make 30% on an options trade, it can also be really easy to lose 30% on an options trade. So whenever you're trading options, you wanna make sure that you have a downside in mind. If I was trading with $300 and my position went down about $120, I would sell out of that position and then use the remaining money to look for a better play that is going to get me back to where I need to be. Because if you stay in the option play, hoping it'll turn around, it's very well possible it could turn around. But again, with uh, time working against you, there's a high likelihood it may never come back around to what you needed to. But now that all that's been said, if you have any questions or comments, hey, leave them down below in the comments. I will try to get to each and every one of them. I really wanna help you succeed. If there's anything I didn't cover in this video, I wanna make content over it so that you don't just have to fully go in blindly trying this on your own because I know options can be kind of scary at first. If you enjoyed this video or learned anything, hey, make sure to smash the like button. It really helps the channel out. And don't be greedy. Share this video with a friend, share it with your family. Get this knowledge out there. And if for some reason you made it this far and you haven't already, what are you doing? Hey, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon so that you don't miss any future content or giveaways. Again, I have a goal of being at 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year, and you are a major part of that. And then again, if you're interested in my Discord group or Tibblio Pro, hey, be sure to check them out down below in the description. I personally recommend going the Tibblio Pro route. You still get my Discord, and then you also get the first month of Tibblio Pro for half price and half price is only like $17. So that's definitely a steal. And did, did I say everything I need to say? Oh yeah, one more thing. If you like free stocks, yo, check out the Webull link and the Moomoo Moo link down below in the description. And last, but certainly not least, thank you so much for watching and peace.